Good morning guys welcome back to the channel um, today we're going to be taking my 2014 uh, Corvette over back to the Chevrolet dealership for another issue uh, something pretty simple but uh, only because I got I got lucky and it got it broke in the open position um, as you can see here I can just open the door okay cars locked right this second the um, so when I went to go get in the car a couple days ago to do another video, I was doing the video that you guys have probably already seen for ProClip USA for the uh, the phone mount. Um, I went to go get in the car and unlock the door, and I hear this. You hear that? So there's locking it, there's unlocking it. Um, so basically what has happened, I figured this out already, that the, uh, the motor, the gear inside that motor has gone bad. Uh, something that you guys could do, and I could have done it here on the, on the show, um, it, it requires you taking the, uh, <clears throat> the rear wheel off, taking the inner liner off, and like right up inside here, right in this area here, <clears throat> there is a little actuator motor. Now I'm going to try to get uh, maybe some uh, a picture or something like that to be able to show you um, in the video when I put it together. But uh, I still have, luckily for me, as you guys know, this has a lot of miles on it, but I have warranty up until 107,500 miles. Well, the car has 106,000 miles, so I'm going to luck out. It's going to be totally covered. I don't have any deductible, so I'm going to be able to take it into the Chevrolet. Now, I did do a little bit of research, and I found out that this part is only a, like a $65 part, but I can understand why it would go bad. Um, when, you know, when it's making that noise, you really hear it. You're not ever paying attention to it, so probably from the very first time you ever got your car, you just said, oh, it's just a noise that, you know, something's doing something, right? It's in the door lock or whatever, but it's actually connected to the whole door lock system or the security system so when when you unlock the car it unlocks when it locks when you lock the car it it goes forward when you take the thing out of you put it into park it's it's unlocked when you put it into drive it locks it does all this stuff on its own and it's constantly making those adjustments so when your doors are unlocked the door the gas door is unlocked when the door the car doors are locked then it locks. So it's constantly, every time somebody gets in and out, it's unlocking, locking back and forth. So I can see why that would wear out. I mean, it is a 2014, but you know, this one's got a lot more miles on it than, you know, on than Jennifer's car here. Jennifer's car is a 16. It's only got a little over 30,000 miles on it. So um, quite a bit of difference. But I just wanted to go over that before I take it into Chevy. Um, and then uh, they said that they don't have the part today. This is on Saturday. They're gonna, they already know what, what's what. They're going to order it as soon as they can get it. Um, I think the parts will be coming out of Reno. So they'll order it Monday. They'll have, the, uh, they'll have it done for me on Tuesday. Um, not, a, not a real big deal. Um, normally, I would do this myself. It wouldn't have been a big deal if I would have been able to get the hold of the part but none of the dealers in the area had it. So uh, again, only a $60 part, so not a big deal. So um, but like I said, I'll uh, try to put some information up on the screen and then once we're done and I get it back, then I'll uh, tell you if they ran into any problems or if there was anything uh, you know, special that you should know about. But I just wanna let you know that that is one of the things that we don't think about on an everyday basis that could go wrong with the car. Okay guys, well, I got the car back and uh, as you know, I had taken it to Future Chevrolet to be able to get taken care of for my gas door. And I showed you that in the fir first part of the video. Um, yeah, we took it in. Yes, of course, they confirmed that I was right, that the, uh, the gas door motor, the locked door motor was actually bad. It had stripped a gear internally, um, exactly what I had said, um, but I was able to take advantage of my what little bit of warranty I still had. It was still under a thousand miles under warranty, so I went ahead and let them take care of it rather than do it on the show. Um, 
the part was only $60.33, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but the labor to do it, um, you have to take that back wheel off, you gotta take the inner wheel liner apart, and I was talking to the service manager, and uh, he was telling me that you've gotta take the, uh, the fuel filler hose loose also to be able to get to that motor to replace it. So instead of me doing it on the show here, which I would have done if it wasn't under warranty, but um, I was able to get it completely done for free while it was under warranty still, so that made it nice. Um, but as you can hear, if you listen now, this is what they're supposed to sound like. You hear that? It's just that little bit of a click, not that grinding noise that I showed you in the very beginning of the video. So anyway, um, I guess I was lucky after talking to everyone, I guess I was the lucky one that uh, it got stuck in the unlocked position. Apparently most of the time when you experience this, it's in the locked position. So um, just be aware. Uh, the only way that I've seen a bunch of, heard a bunch of different things on the internet, uh, in the forums, some people were saying they just yanked the gas door completely off um, and there's from what I've been told, there is a way of being able to slide slide something right, very, very thin piece of plastic or something of that nature down inside that latch to be able to get the door open in the event that you're at a gas station and you can't get the door open. So, so anyway, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can try to find a, a, uh, a schematic or a picture of what we're talking about so you guys can see that. But... Um, you can see here I've got the the bill that they submitted to the insurance company and they they uh, quoted sixty dollars and thirty three cents for the part and two hundred and seventy nine dollars in labor for a total of three hundred and thirty nine dollars and thirty three cents I had a zero deductible insurance so um, you can't beat that with a stick so it ended up costing me nothing that car was there for a few days but because uh, they had to order the part but other than that she's all back she's all healthy and I'm um, just tickled to death I got the car back so I get to drive it to work tomorrow. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I know this was a real short video, but every time I come up with some sort of uh, something that's going to happen to one of the cars, I'll try to let you know about it, what it's going to cost to fix it, or if you can take it to the dealer, what, it, what you can expect the dealer to charge you, okay? So guys, I thought I was done with the video, and then after I got done doing it, I decided I was going to do a little more homework into this door. Uh, I didn't like me not giving you as much information as I thought I should have on how to fix it or how to go about dealing with this other than just sending it into the shop. Um, what I did do a little bit of finding out, I looked on the forums and someone came up with a really, really good idea and I'm going to put a couple of those pictures up so you can see it here. But uh, when you go to open the door here, I'm going to zoom in here in a second but there's this little latch that's right here and this is where basically it's a round circle in the door and there's a the locking pin that's attached to the motor down inside goes in and it locks so what they did is they came up with a just a oversized plug and I'm going to show you that in the on the screen there a picture of it that just goes into this hole and by doing that the locking pin even if it does get activated, it's going to go ahead and it's going to hit the back side of this pin and it's not going to lock. So then that way it can go in and out and, and you won't have this door locking on you. The other thing that you can do is that you can go up inside in the wheel well um, and you can just simply unplug it and then, and then plug this pin, this hole up. So then that way it just doesn't go, go into the hole. Um, that would be the that'd be the, the uh, cheapest way of going about fixing it. And I'll, like I said, I'll show you that in a picture because I did find a picture with that little plug-in in there. Uh, so just to give you an idea, I, I'm not the type of person that likes to band-aid things like that. But in, in a pinch, if you didn't have the motor, uh, a new motor to replace it with, you just, you know, whatever it may be that you just need to you do that as an emergency type situation. Uh, you would have that to work from. So I just wanted to add that to the end of the video here so you, you'll, you guys will have something to think about in the event that you didn't want this to happen or you just don't ever want to deal with it. There's a way of being able to stop it permanently. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put those things on the screen and uh, hopefully that helps.
So guys, thank you for watching. If you guys haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you'll be alerted of our next uploads. And you guys, thank you again for watching. You have a great night.